Hello everyone, Helen here. How are you doing? I hope you're doing okay. Um, it's lovely to be back again, having a bit of a chat with you after my very busy couple of weeks that I've had, but I uh, know lots of you have enjoyed um, the shorter podcasts that I've done for the last couple of weeks. Uh, so they were ones that I was able to prepare in advance uh, before I had various things happening. Uh, but yes, so things are settling back into normal again. And um, as I record this, it's still the Easter holidays, but schools will soon be back and I'll be back to doing piano teaching. So I've had a couple of weeks off piano teaching. And yeah, so the life will settle back into its usual pattern. And so before I go on, though, I want to say welcome to any new subscribers. There have been one or two recently, so that's really lovely. So welcome along and welcome back to everybody who's a regular and uh, keeps keeps popping back each week. So thanks for that. Uh, today, then, I'm just going to share with you some finished knitting and crochet projects, two crochet ones and two knitting, knitted ones. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of a compilation of video that I took while my nieces Nell and Libby were staying. Uh, we, we got up to all sorts of things and I suppose the main reason I'm sharing it is is because we do lots of making and you might be interested in what we made and yeah either to do for yourself or if you've got uh, children that come and stay with you or children of your own <laughs> uh, so it might give you the odd idea as well. But um, yes, I, I did have a great time. But I'll, more about that, uh, more about that in a bit. So, finish. Oh yeah, and yeah, before before I go, uh, we're going to go out on a very short walk that I went on on Easter Sunday. So yeah, so I think that's it for today. And so I'll get on with the finished project. So the first one I'm going to show you is a very very tiny project. So this is really nice if you want a bit of satisfaction in finishing something really quickly. It's this little uh, pot with a lid, so it's in the shape of an acorn. And uh, I think the designer is called Sweet Softies, but I'll, I'll put the information, put any information uh, about patterns and things in the description box below. And uh, so as long as you're watching this on um, an, any device apart from the television, then you can always find out um, what, you know, some I usually put a link into to, uh, where I got the patterns from. Yep. Yeah, so, and inside the pot is this little squirrel, cute little squirrel. I'm not quite sure why I made it, but I like to have these little things. I like to do tiny little short projects sometimes if I just want to finish something, and you have that feeling of satisfaction. And also, it's useful for me to have a little store of um, gifts that I can give. Uh, you know at a moment's notice, ready-made, ready-made gifts. So yeah, so that's the squirrel. I just used scraps of yarn. I can't even remember which ones I used. They were just, you know, oddments. So yeah, anyway, so that's a nice little project. Uh, the next finished project is um, this gorgeous little vintage style bear. Can't remember where I spotted him in the first place, but I just saw him and Thought I had to make, had to make it, and I actually thought it would be interesting to make a toy that was that you knitted lots of separate bits for. Because if you've watched a few times before, you'll know I've made several of the tutu bear patterns and and other patterns by Cynthia Valley, where you use double pointed needles and you start from the head and work your way down and it's all in one piece. There's no sewing together at all. Whereas this little bear, um, well, there is a lot of sewing together. So it was very, very easy to knit, very straightforward. Um, it's, it's knitted in reverse stocking stitch. So you get this very sort of fine looking garter stitch appearance um, on the outside of the bear, which is part of the vintage look think. Um, so, and the pieces are all very easy to knit, uh, but the the real 
tricky task comes when you have to sew it together. That was so, so fiddly. Uh, I just had this pile of tiny pieces that I gradually had to make work my way through. Um, yes, and it took a lot of uh, very, very painstaking stuffing to get everything looking right. Uh, in fact, I don't think that the head shape, although I like this head shape, it doesn't look quite the same as it does on the pattern. Uh, the designer, by the way, is Sandra Pollock, and I bought an actual paper pattern, in fact, on Etsy. And that's unusual these days. You don't often have paper patterns. Uh, well, I don't anyway. I usually just download the PDF and then work from my iPad or, or sometimes print it off. But uh, yes, anyway, so this was a paper pattern. And um, yeah, so I, actually I realised after I'd bought it that I've got a book of teddy bears by this same designer, Sandra Pollock. Uh, although this bear isn't in it, so that was a relief. Oh, I thought, oh no, I bought a pattern and I've already got it. But no, it's not in the book. Anyway, yes, so very, very fiddly to sew together. But I'm very pleased with the overall effect. I think I interrupted myself there. I think I was going to say something about the head. Um, so sewing it together, I don't know whether it's, it's slightly the wrong shape because of the head gusset here maybe is the wrong way around. It wasn't really clear which end had to go at the nose end and which went to the back. And they weren't quite symmetrical, so maybe I got that the wrong way around. Anyway, I think he looks lovely. He's got a nice little face. And um, that that is, when you're making uh, toys, which are, you know, little characters, the face is definitely, uh, it's the hardest part and it's the most crucial part of a toy you need to get the expression just right and the eyes need to be placed just correctly otherwise it just might not look quite as you hoped <laughs> and yeah and I love I love his little hoodie as well yeah and actually I don't think I've given him a name yet mm, I have to think about a name for him uh, but uh, yes I the, the jointed limbs weren't too tricky to to do I just used some uh, embroidery thread, some six stranded embroidery threads. So I used all six strands um, and the instructions in the pattern were, were quite clear on how to do that. So yeah, so he is really lovely. I am very, very pleased with him. You can't be in a hurry when you're doing it. Um, you just have to take bit by bit. I had that big pile of pieces for this bear and I thought, oh no, and then I thought, right, no, I'm just going to take it piece by piece. It doesn't matter how long it takes me to put it together. Um, and yes, it just, oh, like lots of crafts, it slows you right down and you just lose yourself in what you're doing. So yeah, so that's a little bear. Next finished object, a bit bigger than the bear, is this gorgeous, gorgeous rabbit. It's crocheted and... Uh, he is designed by a Ukrainian lady called Nelly Handmade. I bought the pattern, I think I bought the pattern on Etsy. And I just think he is beautiful. He's quite quirky in his shape with his little short legs that are going in like that and quite long arms. He's got a tail on the back. And I decided to make him a neck warmer in Ukrainian colours. Just a little token of kind of my thoughts for, you know, people of Ukraine, just to know, I, I haven't forgotten that you're there and, um, you know, I'm thinking about you. And in my little way, I've supported a Ukrainian designer as well. But he was really a joy to make. Very, very straightforward. Um, uh, and the, the most joyful thing about him making him, I mean, was that I used Scapia's stonewashed yarn for the first time. And have you, you might know that I've uh, been using some crochet cotton by Drops. I can't remember which one it is. I uh, can't remember. Which I've absolutely hated using because it's so splitty. Well, this is just so lovely to crochet with. So, uh, oh, 
lovely. I'm going to make loads more things in Scabby Stone Washed. I've already bought lots of balls of yarn, so it's going to be definitely my go-to yarn for making toys like this. And yeah, so I can highly recommend this pattern. It wasn't it wasn't difficult at all. Um, I don't know. I don't think you need to be um, maybe not a complete beginner, but it's really, really not too tricky at all. The pattern is well written, so you're guided through. Yeah, so it's lovely. And so I, I just finished making him when my nieces came to stay and he didn't have a name. So we looked up some Ukrainian names and decided to call him Bilenko or Bill for short, Bill Bunny. Uh, and as you'll see a little bit later, he even came out on um, some walks with us. Uh, the first time we took him out was to do a photo shoot in the woods. So they really, really enjoyed that. And that's some of these photos that you'll have seen while I'm chatting here. Uh, yeah, so that's him. And then the final finished project, Knitted One, which if you've been following me for a while, you've kind of seen its progress and ups and downs. And that is my pink uh, cable top. And it'll be easier to show you that in photos. So you can see here, I am very, very pleased with it now that it's finished. I'm pleased to have finished. And uh, so you may have if you follow me on Instagram, I've already seen some photos of it and I've had lots of really, really lovely comments. Um, so that made me feel very good about it. I wasn't sure whether I'd chosen a colour that was way too bright. Um, but actually, as soon as I put it on, I thought, oh, yeah, I think that the colour actually is OK for me. It suits me all right. So that's good. Uh, the thing I am most pleased about is just the fit. It just seems to fit perfectly. So I did do a swatch before I started to check my gauge. And um, so I did make sure I was using the uh, correct needle size that was recommended. And that has worked out, worked out perfectly. But it's just, yeah, it's just the right shape for me. Um, and... But, but it looks okay. It doesn't make me look a funny shape. I don't think so anyway. Uh, uh, so I am really, really pleased with that. Uh, what else can I say? Yes, it, I've, I've had a few problems with it along the way. You might remember if you watched that podcast that uh, I had a problem with the cables. I, I had to take that back up. But I learned, learned a new technique. Of the, I think it's called the ladder technique where you just take out the cable and then knit it back up in the right way so I managed to do that so I learnt something new there while uh, through my mistake and uh, what else happened uh, oh yes well I cast on the first sleeve and I got it almost finished and then realised something was wrong and then I realised uh, instead of casting on 90 stitches I'd only cast on 80 so I had to take all of that out. There was no other, other way of doing it. At least they're just short sleeves. It wasn't a terrible thing. Um, and what else? Oh, yes. And then I had, I did the, uh, probably a classic mistake, which was when I was came to sew it together, which was I sewed, started sewing the first sleeve, the raglan uh, seam to the wrong side. So I had to take that out. Anyway, so I've learned lots from my mistakes in this project and, um, <clears throat> you know, in the end, I've ended up with something that I am not going to enjoy make, uh, wearing and it's encouraged me to be really keen on the idea of making myself something else to wear. Um, so, so that's really good. So, yeah, that's my finished projects for today. And I'm going to show you now um, a little compilation of video that I took while Nell and Libby, my nieces, they are nine and 12. Well, Nell is 12, Libby is nine. And they came and stayed with me for a week. So they live in Scotland in the Scottish borders. And they came and stayed with me for a week of their Easter holidays. And when they come here, it's pretty much like some kind of activity holiday that I have prepared for them. We do so many things. The days are very, very well filled. 
and and they're they're absolutely a delight to have staying with me. I have to say, and uh, yeah, we we just we made loads of things. We baked a few things. I didn't video everything, by the way, um, and. So, oh, I always set a bit of a routine for the day as well because the, the girls then know where they are. They know what's going to um, happen pretty much at different times of the day. So uh, because I'm their piano teacher and normally I teach them online, they had a, a straight after breakfast every day piano practice section uh, session, I mean, with me helping them. It was like they had a mini piano lesson each day, really. And we made sure we had some fresh air so I had a walk after that each day and then the rest of the day was pretty much all kinds of activities usually making something sometimes board games um yeah so it's all sorts of things uh I'm not going to talk you through everything now because I'm going to have a chat while I'm showing you the the video that I took uh so yeah come along and uh enjoy my week with my nieces So at the start of every day when Nell and Libby were staying with me, uh, we did piano practice. So first of all, here's Libby. Nell doing a bit of her piano practice. And Nell is also learning to play the Scottish bagpipes. And this is her practicing the chanter, which is part of the bagpipes, it's the part that your fingers move on. And she will at some point progress to the whole of the bagpipes. And Libby is learning to play the ukulele, so she brought hers with her and we had a few little sing songs together. Every day we went out for a walk. Once we'd done music practice, we went out. And you can see the girls have got Bilenko Bunny with them because on this particular day we were taking him on a photo shoot down in the woods. And those are photos which hopefully you've already seen today. And yes, it was just really nice to get out and have some fresh air every day. And then most of the rest of our days were spent making things. So here we are doing some leaf prints using felt pens drawn on the backs of leaves and pressed onto paper. I did one of my 100 day project leaves like this and they wanted to have a go. Uh, we did a tutorial from YouTube on how to make a paper chicken and uh, it's really lovely how much they're able to do themselves now. When they were younger obviously they needed a lot of help but now I can just sit with them and just give the occasional bit of encouragement and yeah it's it's such good fun I made a chicken as well <laughs> and uh, we were quite pleased with the results they had rather floppy necks and we had to uh, shorten them a bit but other, other than that they were pretty successful here's Nell and Libby's finished chickens and we did some potato printing again the girls had seen another of my leaves and uh, wanted to have a go at potato printing themselves. So I did lots of cutting of the potatoes and they had fun with the paints, making lots and lots of prints. And when they were dry, they cut them out and we used the shapes um, when we made notebooks. They each made a notebook and decorated the front of the notebook with some of the prints that they'd made. 
So that was a good use for them. We also made some Easter cards. We did a couple of water paint, watercolour painting tutorials, speckled eggs and bunnies. And we'd also collected some white feathers when we were out on one of our walks to use in our cards. Yeah, and a spot of baking now. We did, we did baking a few times, actually. Fairy cakes that always go down well. And they also help to make their tea sometimes. So here, here we are making pizzas, um, really delicious and they're always eaten up in no time at all. So we really love a homemade pizza. And then we had an Easter egg hunt and the girls here are in my garden, not actually looking for chocolate eggs, but they're looking for tags. Mm. And they each had a particular tag with a pattern on an egg with a particular pattern on so they couldn't collect the other person's egg they had to just look for their own tag and when they'd found 10 I then had set up a shop <laughs> on my piano stool and they could then come and exchange their tags so you could you might have spotted there's something written on the other side and they could exchange their tags for the things in the shop. So that was such a lot of fun and they really just got into the spirit of it. Just do a lucky dip on your tags. Two green eggs for you, madam. There we go. Um, maybe, maybe some... Maybe three blue. Three eggs, blue this time. Yeah. Okay, then. That'll be lovely. There we go. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll see you next. <laughs> see you next time. Take one last Hard bag of mini eggs. Oh, there you go. In the evenings, there was always a bit of quiet time for Nell and I to sit down and knit together. Nell is very good at knitting, and here she is just starting to make a knitted rabbit. And then the day always ended with story time and I had such a lovely time reading this story to them by Ash Oakham Thorne. Chapter One, A Spring Morning, in which we meet Moss, Burnet and Cumulus and a peculiar thing is discovered. It was the kind of March day that feels springish, despite the weather not yet having warmed up. Yellow crocuses bloomed on the verges the leafless hedges were sprinkled with buds like tiny green fairy lights about to be switched on, and the sky was very blue. That kind of day only comes at the very tail end of winter, and it makes everything feel fizzy and exciting. It was just the sort of day for something unusual to occur. And then there were three little figures gathered at the base of the old ash in the corner of the garden, which is an extraordinary thing when you think about it, though most humans don't. There they were, as plain as day. Moss, the youngest, and Emmons from Ash. So, we did a lot <laughs> and had a lovely time. Uh, one of the things I didn't show you there, was one of the activities that we did was making paper. We had a go at making paper, which was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm going to show you that next time, actually. So... So I'm trying to keep these podcasts to be reasonably short. Uh, and I'm just going to finish today with a very short uh, bit of video of, of a walk that went on on Easter Sunday. It was only a short walk. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time and uh, we just wanted to go and spend a little bit of time by the sea since we were visiting my mum. And uh, we had a walk on the sand dunes in a place called Seaton Sluice. Um, the beach there is called Blythe Beach. But I really, really love the sand dunes. They bring me happy memories from when I was a child. So sand dunes are great places to play, play hide and seek and little places where you can make dens and things. And although this, the grass that grows there is very, very spiky, that's a childhood memory as well, getting prickled by the grass. Um, I, I just love, I, I just love sand dunes. They're quite hard to walk in as well. And when I was videoing it, I was trying to give you the, the feeling of actually walking through the sand dunes some of the time. And uh, we, we, we did, we walked on the beach a bit as well, but what I am showing you next is, is just wandering through the sand dunes and the views that we got over the, the very wide expanse of beach, which was 
uh, for that beach it was quite busy I mean I know it doesn't look very busy but um, it's it's normally pretty deserted and uh, but this was Easter Sunday so there were more people than usual out anyway come come and walk with me through the sand dunes Okay then, that's it for today I think. I will be back again um, next week with, with more chat, more making. Uh, but until then, keep yourself busy, take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Okay then, bye!